Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, we've got a whole bunch of stuff about CM Punk, including him trying to make AEW Collision his territory. Him apologising to Hangman Adam Page. We have Tony Khan dodging questions and marking out. And Rob Van Dam has no time for tribal BS amongst <laughs> wrestling fans. I love that story at yeah. the end of this video. I'm Andy Murray. I'm Michael Hamflet. And this is the news. Let's kick this thing off by trying to summarise about four different reports on CM Punk and Ryan Nemeth and the AEW collision. This is going to take me a while. I'm really sorry. <laughs> There's a lot to get through. But uh, yeah, basically, a bunch of reports have dropped, including one from PW Torch. Right, we spoke yesterday about collision, hangman going home, Ryan Nemeth confrontation. Check that out if you want to know the skinny on all of that. What language am I using today? The skinny fat ass on that. Uh, it's like 1999. Uh, <laughs> extra, extra, punk in the nose. PW Torch. Coming through for Scoopski, uh, noting that CM Punk is staking out his territory on AEW Collision. He has become fiercely protective of the Saturday Night brand since it was launched. Now, Wade Keller writes that Punk has had good reviews for his backstage leadership on Collision. He, <laughs> this is funny, he apparently wants to create a low drama environment. I get it. <laughs> which is why he doesn't want elite aligned wrestlers or people who are perceived as disloyal on the show. All right. <laughs> However, some wrestlers who aren't in positions of power in the company or on big contracts believe they have to lay low around Punk uh, because nobody wants to be on his list of enemies. Now, in Punk's eyes, Collision is an opportunity to show the leadership. He has criticized AEW's executive vice presidents for not showing on Dynamite. That's his view, not ours, by the way. Um, yeah. <laughs> they, they don't, don't shout at us. Uh, this has led to a situation where the former AEW world champion effectively has the power to veto people backstage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this follows Ryan Nemeth and being ejected or, or sent home this week and then Hangman Page showed up and was like, hey, pre-tape. And they were like, no, not here, over here. Mm. Get out of the building. Uh, now, <laughs> there's more. Get out of the building. There, yeah, get out of here, big building. Uh, <laughs> The evil architect himself. Big Bill is fully welcome <laughs> to all tapes. <laughs> Always welcome. He's going to stop him. He's yeah. going to keep Big Bill He's out. Big Bill. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, Dave Meltzer, Wrestling Observer Radio. More people have been thrown out of collision lately. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Daniels, yeah. AEW's the head of talent relations. Uh, and apparently, what, what am I doing, Murray? Flexing. There you go. Right, yeah. Matt Hardy uh, and Isaiah Cassidy have previously been scheduled for collision, then had their travel unbooked as well. Um... <laughs> It's noted, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of losing my mind here. Yeah. Uh, the punk camp have denied responsibility for Paige and Hardy being removed, but we'll talk about some others in a mm. little minute. Um, Daniels, of course, was in the room for Brawl Out, but he broke up the fight. <laughs> so what's going on? What on earth is going on? Now, PW Torch's report contains some more stuff. There's more on the Ryan Nemeth situation. If you want to know more about that, check out our write-up on the website. I simply do not have time to cover every detail of this. There's some good stuff from House of Wrestling as well, uh, Nick Hausman's site. Uh, now, Fightful Select have reported that the Christopher Daniels thing is to do with Ace Steel. Mm. A Steel, of course, was fired from AEW after his role in the brawl. He allegedly bit Kenny Omega on the arm. <laughs> he was brought back to the company this year, but working from home. <sighs> CM Punk doesn't think that's fair, according to, 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 to Fightful here, um, while Daniels is backstage, and Daniels is not there now. This is a whole bloody thing, and I'm losing my mind trying to... Um, trying to put this together. Um, Talent believes that the Hardy, Isaiah Cassidy thing is down to the punk camp, but mm. th that's not confirmed. Um, this is a whole stramash of stuff. I think our best course of action after this, the, uh, as I've wrapped there, is to go through your stuff and then we'll summarize our thoughts. But before we do that, let us know your thoughts on this whole <laughs> yes, mess please. in the comments se section below. I know you probably don't need a second invitation. It's CM Punk and the Elite, but please do that. Uh, and Big Mike is about to tell you some more info about yeah. Hangman Page. Even more on the punker. <laughs> Doubling down, the business is better with this guy in it, man. Uh, aye. So he's a 
apparently apologised to Hangman Page. Like, in spite of all of this drama, uh, he believes himself that he might have gone a little bit too far, of course, referring to uh, the weekend post-collision, that the reason Hangman Page was called Hangman Page is because the toys in the local store are all still hanging on the shelf. He called Hangman Page a peg warmer, peg warmer. which, uh, for those that don't know or aren't in the figure community, is a very cruel term about wrestlers that are always on the shelf because nobody's buying the toys. Uh, he did his bit about how loads of wrestlers can claim to be the heart and soul, uh, but they're not the chin because they can't take the licking and keep on kicking. James Ellsworth is the chin. And, well, indeed. Um, Punk couldn't take a licking, apparently, as well. He kind of blamed um, the House of Black chopping too hard when he'd said no chops. And that he was a little bit rattled. He maybe didn't didn't quite go the way he wanted it to go. And has apparently reached out, according um, to the flagship wrestling podcast, Voices of Wrestling Network, mm-hmm. I believe, have, uh, have come through with a bit of an update on this. You know, there are multiple, there's more than two, there's multiple sides to the CM Punk story, and they've got one. There's about 12. Yeah. Um, they said that Punk had texted Hangman Page after the fact, apologising. Um, he said he didn't have anything to do, obviously, to your point with uh, Hangman being sent away. Um and was just, uh, obviously Paige was going to be doing a pre-tape in the building, but instead was sent elsewhere. Um, You know, uh, Punk also mentioned in this report, I guess they got from the flagship, that um, um, if they'd have both known they'd have been around, they'd have tried to strike up a conversation, it wouldn't necessarily have to have been over texts, which, you know, flies in the face of one story, but we're talking about different people. It's that like, does come directly from the punk camp. Indeed, though. yeah. Um, we should, you know, that, that is absolutely worth stressing. So, obviously, CM Punk's people or Punk himself are going to get some comments out, whereas these comments are going to come from, one would presume, sources. And you, you say, like, Meltzer and uh, Sean Rossap and everybody will have their sources, just like Nick Hausman will have his and Voices will have theirs. And who knows what the motivations of all those sources are. We are just left to try and report what we've heard mm. and, I, I don't know, I guess, like, form some takes on it, form some opinions. Yeah. Like, people are going to do that, hopefully, in the comments. And, you know, everyone's going to have the biases. And the Look, if Matt Hardy's been sent home, I'd be wanting to claim credit for that. So, for Punk not to want that, like... Why do you have to bury Matt Hardy? Oh, no, I just, he's uh, a nice man. He seems, doing, like, he's, he's, he like, seems like a nice guy, doesn't leave he? Him alone. But, uh, That's very mean. But, uh, yeah, it is. But, um... I like this is going to be the nature of this stuff. It would seem yeah. like everybody's got their uh, own dogs in the fight, and uh, I think until un- until ultimately you see things like these wrestlers interacting yeah. on screen, we'll never know for definite if they're working together or not. Yeah, there's some pretty other interesting stuff in that flagship uh, podcast report as well, noting that Punk has said himself to a source of the outlet that he was 100% responsible for Christopher Daniels and Ryan Nemeth yeah. not being there. Uh, there's also a list of wrestlers who have avoided who avoided CM Punk at Forbidden Door. Um, Matt Hardy's on there, the Young Bucks are on there, fair. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but also on there, Jack Perry and Britt Baker, which hmm. I found quite interesting, but like I can understand why people might, not, might want to give CM Punk a wide berth. Um, if I was to sit here and summarise all my thoughts on this situation, this would be a 40-minute video, which would be great for ad revenue, but, you know, it would drag on a little bit. Um, I think the idea of creating a drama-free environment is very noble. However, I'm not sure you can do that and then go and cut that promo after Collision last week. I mean, t- claiming 100% credit, like, it's interesting with the Nemeth and Daniels ones that he has owned that yeah like maybe that's an attempt to sort of get on top of some of the other rumours that he knows are going to build off the back of the hangman page well that's not a thing the hangman page was a work but this is real I did want them gone maybe he's trying to like create a dividing line between the fact and the fiction of all this he might be he might well be look I am quite I'm fairly willing to believe that on you know the adrenaline dump of just competing in a wrestling match I maybe the Hangman Page stuff came off worse on audio than it, than it formulated in mm-hmm. Punk's head. I'm quite willing to believe that. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here, and uh, let, let's just talk about Tony Khan's stuff here. This is interesting. Uh, <laughs> there's the other guy. <laughs> the other guy. Uh, right, Tony Khan was kind of asked about this whole situation, and he uh, he was on uh, the Battleground podcast with Battle and Eli, uh, presumably not Eli Drake. Um, <laughs> yeah. He was asked if he wanted to comment on Punk's Hangman promo and the latest drama, uh, and he said, no, not really. No. No comment, mm-hmm. uh, which is exactly what you'd expect in a situation like this. Um, but he added that he thought it was a great show on Saturday. So he immediately went into promoter mode, which I I love that. Um, Tony said, I don't have any further comment to that, but I'm glad people are still very interested in our wrestlers and what's happening after the wrestling shows. He's correct. Uh, 
We'll try to have a couple of great shows this week, and certainly there has been a lot of interest in what's happening in AEW, in it and out of the ring. Um, okay, another interesting. It's not wrong. <laughs> no, he, he's very correct. Another interesting note on Tony. This is this popped me this morning. It's funny. Uh, PW and Torch, their big report on all of this. Noted that when CM Punk uh, returns to uh, television, yeah. Collision, 17th of June, presumably, mm-hmm. that show, Tony Khan, Gorilla Position, headphones on, doing his, doing his job. Mm-hmm. Uh, CM Punk walks past. Tony Khan enthusiastically starts uh, pumping his fist and chanting CM Punk! <laughs> yeah. Punk. That was me and you on the live stream. You can still watch that on our YouTube channel. We're reacting just the same way as CM Punk. It's still there. It's still there. Now, this is one account from one report. Fightful noted uh, in their update that Khan was excited to have Punk back in AEW. Of course he would be. Uh, but the outlet had not heard of uh, his specific reaction to the latest controversies or anything like that. So... This is PW Torches. It might just come from one source. Who the heck knows? Uh, Maybe it happened. Uh, I can believe it happened. Mm -hmm. I said this the other day. One of my favorite things about Tony Khan is that he's eccentric. And like us, he's a nerd. A nerd, remember, to me, is a positive term because it shows you are deeply invested and passionate about stuff. Uh, Now, of course, fandoms come with certain traits that are not so pleasing, which we'll actually talk about with the next story. Mm. Um, However, to me, I find it very endearing that Tony Khan marks out over his wrestlers. And... uh, I understand that something like this might be perceived as taking a side in the elite CM Punk stuff, uh, but to me, I think this is probably just Tony uh, marking out. Has he not probably marked out to the elite as well? Maybe that's me trying to 50-50 all this, but like that's him, isn't it? He just marks out to the guys he likes. Hugs like, Claudio yeah, and like, uh, yeah. We had a generation of wrestlers being told, for God's sake, don't show Vince McMahon you're a mark, and now... The owner himself in Tony Khan is the mark. I think it's a good. Thing. I don't think that's such a bad yeah. flip. I don't think that's a problem at all. Yeah. Like, yeah, the punk, um, punk's hangman page remarks that you know, obviously Tony Khan wouldn't comment on. Like, it'd be lovely if that had just gone as he would have liked. You know, and Omega said maybe we'll be on collision, and it created that nice frisson. Maybe Punk was looking that's for that. Just a little taste it, without putting your foot in yeah, the water. and instead the it's piranhas. gone a little bit. Wild yeah. again. Yeah, so I don't. I understand Tony Khan not wanting to comment on that because yeah. maybe there are nice things occurring and he just doesn't want to spoil that. We'll bring you more on this situation as it develops. If you want to keep up with that, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, you'll get the videos sent directly to you. We are serving c- daily on <laughs> and you will keep up with it if you subscribe. Thank you for doing that anyway. And so is Rob Van Dam. He's serving. If I've got what that definition means because he's uh, basically put tribal wrestling fans in their place a little bit. Um, He tweeted out on Monday that apparently WWE fans are raging with him for daring to work for AEW. I didn't realise this stuff still went on but there you go. Um, I'm just going to read the quote from Van Dam because he kind of sums the story up and then his reaction to it. Die rules. He says, quote, some fans I say I did WWE wrong by appearing on AEW I wonder if they would all eat shit if I revealed that I had permission to do it, or would they just move on to puke out the next meaningless BS that comes out of their mouths? Yeah, I figured I'll keep it to myself for now. Uh, Van Damme was, of course, on the Dynamite on the 2nd of August, and then again a week later, first making an appearance to challenge Jack Perry for the FTW title, and then indeed wrestle for it the following week. It was pretty great, really well received. Really? Van Damme was in awesome shape. Um, it was a two fet that felt like a one shot deal. Um, we don't know if there's maybe further business between the two sides on the line, or indeed Van. And um, going back to WWE, where he's probably welcome as well. Um, we haven't had a bit of this for a while, but like I guess it was hot during the Wednesday Night War era specifically. Yeah. Um, a lot of this has cooled, but the idea that there are still uh, wrestling fans out there, not now going for companies, <laughs> but just poking individual wrestlers. I imagine uh, Mercedes Man got it from a lot of the uh, the Sasha crew, perhaps when she decided to depart WWE. I think but, she still is. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can't tweet about Mercedes Money without like someone mm-hmm. sliding in your replies and going, "Ah, it sucks." And then you look at their avatar, and it's like the WWE logo. Yeah, something. she's it's rubbish like, now. Yeah. She was brilliant before. People I, playing sports teams. It's um, it's weird that it goes on. I am. Um, I welcome uh, a bit of uh, spice and a bit of fiery debate in these regards, but I just think um, because Twitter is a X is a destination yeah. for it, I think it's there to go horribly wrong, isn't it? And Van Damme getting tweets seems to bear that out. Yeah, Rob Van Damme is a 52-year-old man. I, he can make his own decisions. He, like, you don't, he sure can. You, what, what, what are we doing here? This is all very... 
Very silly and frivolous to me, um, but it was quite amusing to read Rob Van Dam addressing it in a very Rob Van Dam fashion. Brilliant. Uh, I love this man. I enjoyed his match with Jack Perry. I thought mm, it was really good. Uh, I really liked someone. I, I'm sorry, I totally forgot who made this video. Shout them out in the comments if you remember. But someone on social media, I think it was on Twitter, X, made uh, like a video comparing the spots, like Rob doing them like 30 years ago in a mm. match, and then doing the exact spots against Jack Perry, and there's like barely dif any difference. It's really cool. Uh, so shout out to Rob Van Dam, very funny man, living a good life by all accounts. What a guy. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to our questions. <laughs> I'm screwing you up. Thanks, Burner. Uh, cut today, they come from the YouTube community. <laughs> Bloop. Um, shout out to the YouTube community. Sorry, I'm just trying to swipe a Slack notification away from my phone. This is a... Uh, we'll, 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 uh, this is a do it. Bloop. Bloop. This is a disaster. Cancel. First question comes yeah. from Poisoned Wit. Uh, thank you, Poisoned Wit, from the YouTube community. Good morning, gents. After tonight's Raw, it seems like we're building to a 4v4 War Games match with the Judgment Day and JD McDonough against Cody Sammy in a returning KO, if KO's healthy, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, but who should their fourth member be? Uh, they reckon someone from NXT because Dominic has the North American belt. Maybe Rey Mysterio. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I like that. I like Rey and... Um Potentially Wesley, I guess, if there's yeah, North American title. That was going to be my answer. Oh, sorry. Um, How dare you? What a pitch, though, because it does sound like the match of the year between those two sides of five, doesn't it? I'm going to go a bit left field, right? Who's a guy that the baby faces can just shock the Judgment Day with? There's like a... Well, you thought we were going to go down NXT. We've gone down a different route. And who's a guy that's not been featured in an act on the UCA that you thought he might have been? Omos. <laughs> Why not? Imagine bringing, Why not? imagine bringing a giant to a gang fight. There you like, go. Uh, imagine how Moss in War Games. He kills everyone. Is he taller than the cage, do you think? <laughs> how would he get in it? I think he's, he's got to be taller than the dog. I know a guy who they could bring in who could just slip right through that cage. There we go. Here he is. It's the, eel. the fifth man, brother. <laughs> it's the fifth eel. That was weird. Kevin Owens uh, swinging it around <laughs> like Hercules with his chain. He'll just Eel flying everywhere. Slides out of his hands because he's slippery and then electrocutes a fan. <laughs> <laughs> right, our next question. Eel pins JD McDonough. <laughs> comes from, I, I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce this, uh, K1NGR. Uh, 3NSL59 King, King Grenzel59 There we go yep. uh, Good morning you two awesome gentlemen What are your thoughts on the CM Punk real world champion storyline How would you book it from here on You're the best wrestling source out there IMO oh. Thank you so much King uh, So thanks for your amazing work Have a wonderful day uh, Hopefully I get the chance to see you at Wembley We'll be there Unless the trains piss the bed Oh yeah um, Good drama What do you reckon of King Grenzel's ideas what do you reckon how you booking the, the real world title story love it uh, love the gimmick love the idea love the um, unification match that presumably MJF the character doesn't even really want to acknowledge or talk about um, he wants to believe CM Punk is in his rear view at this point he's the world champion uh, whilst Punk's claim is not unfounded I think the um, X across the belt, the X across the belt is, uh, despite it being the straight edge thing, is a real transgression as well. Um, I highlighted on Twitter at the time, Tony Schiavone's face dropping when he saw a power madman spray painting a belt and he got these WCW Vietnam flashbacks of Hollywood Hogan. I think that ties in nicely to the wider punk story. I think he'll lose that belt and that'll be the tipping point that kind of like confirms the heel that is currently laying dormant within to explode out. Yeah. But I just think it's captivating. Like from the moment yeah. you came out with that red bag, I was just gripped by the whole idea. Totally agree. I'm 100% into it. I think ultimately CM Punk puts MGF over and mm. kind of unifies or whatever term you want to use uh, the belts and that goes away. And I think that's the right choice, the best choice and the one they will do uh, after months and months of building to it and MGF not really acknowledging it and then get goaded into actually finally acknowledging it somehow, however you want to do that. Uh, may I indulge you in a bit of my bollocks? Yeah. My ideas that make more sense in my head than reality. Eddie Kingston comes back from Japan. Eddie Kingston's got a world title now. He's a strong champion. Uh -huh. But Eddie Kingston wants another belt. He wants the real world title, blah, blah, blah. And AEW is home promotion, not to discredit the belt he currently has. He goes, hey, CM Punk, we got unfinished business. Eddie Kingston beats CM Punk, claims that world title, uses it to earn a shot against MJF, beats his ass as well, Ooh. holds it for a week, and then gets screwed out of everything. Wait a minute. Are you saying to me that Eddie Kingston should win the belt at Grand Slam? Because this pitch has never come up. <laughs> and here we are again. 
Grant slams in like a week. <laughs> yeah, do, do it. <laughs> chaos. Do it. Absolute I chaos. love that. I love that. It's all over like, the place. Yeah. Uh, hey, that's my fantasy book. In time scales, you can make them up. But hey, last one question for today uh, from I love. RBF03. <laughs> I, I, YouTube needs to turn on, or I need to turn on the feature where I can just get people's names. Uh, <laughs> it's like Steve. Uh, I can't do usernames. I'm an idiot. Bill. Uh, bill. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Bill, uh, wrestling has more than one big Bill, and uh, they want to know this question comes from I love uh, RVR, RBF. Do you think that Goldberg will make a surprise appearance at All In? And if so, how would you book his arrival? You imagine. The state of various online apps if Kenny Omega doesn't get a singles match at all in, but Goldberg does. Oh, God, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> well, now that it's probably too late to book uh, the OG Big Bill for Wembley, I would just have him uh, arrive as a surprise and spear Chris Jericho. Fair. That's like, Jericho's just lost to uh, Will Ospreay or something, and he's lying there selling them. Big Bill's music hits. Not the Big Bill, Goldberg's music hits. And then he comes out on the long Wembley ramp and spears him. What happened there? He speared the tech. All right. Oh, Goldberg's in the studio. He speared the Wi-Fi connection, it seems. Uh, well, hopefully this video is still recording. If it's oh, not, no. you don't get this answer. Um, Big Bill debuts alongside uh, the real Big Bill, mm -hmm. like a British TV show on a night when the schedule's loose. Double Bill. Uh, and they win the tag team titles because they're the best tag team in the world. Oh, like just, you have the, the sort of the typical thing where you have this classic match and then it's effectively a cash in. Young Bucks and FTR finishes, then Double Bill just laid the challenge out <laughs> and win there and then. And speaking of Double Bills, you've watched this video now. Watch this one. See you later. Bye.